Hey, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to create powerful, customizable portrait posters from photos. Open a high-resolution photo you'd like to use for this project. I downloaded this one from Shutterstock. The results look best when the photo is cropped tightly around the head. To do this, open your Crop tool, and at the top, open the Crop Preset list. Click Width, Height, and Resolution. Click the Clear button, which clears out the amounts. For this example, let's type in 1200 pixels for its width, 1200 pixels for its height, and 150 pixels for its resolution. Go to a corner and drag it in. To reposition it, just drag your photo. Continue to finesse it until you're happy with its position and size, and then press Enter or Return. To zoom it out or in, press Ctrl or Command and the plus or minus key a few times on your keyboard, or press Ctrl or Command 0 to fit it onto your canvas. Next, we'll separate our subject from its background. There are many ways to do this depending on which Photoshop version you're using. If your version is CC 2020 or later, unlock the background and open the Properties panel. If you don't see it, go to Window and Properties. Click Remove Background. Photoshop automatically masked out the background by creating a layer mask of our subject. We'll make a new layer below it by Control or Command clicking the New Layer icon. We'll fill it with black, but before we do, let's check our foreground and background colors. If they aren't black and white respectively, press D on your keyboard. If it's inverted, press X. To fill the empty layer with the foreground color, press Alt or Option plus Delete. Make the top layer active and click the Adjustment Layer icon. Click Black and White. Open the Black and White preset list and click High Contrast Blue Filter. This gives our subject a dramatic high contrast effect. If you want to brighten some areas of the face, make your subject active and make a copy of it by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Open the Dodge tool and the Brush Picker. Pick a soft round brush. We'll adjust its size in a moment. Its hardness is 0%, the range is mid-tones, and the exposure is 100%. To make your brush bigger or smaller, make sure the Caps Lock key is off and press the right or left bracket key on your keyboard. Click once or twice to brighten the midtones of your subject. Next, we'll restore back the color of the eyes, and if you want to change their color, I'll show you that as well. Click the layer mask of the black and white adjustment layer to make it active, and open your pencil tool and pencil picker. Pick a soft or hard round point. Make its hardness and opacity both 100%. Adjust the pencil point size and draw over the irises to reveal the original color through the layer mask. To change their color, click the adjustment layer icon and click Solid Color. Pick a color you like for the irises. I already know the color I want, so I'll type it into the hexadecimal field. 0, 0, F, 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 C. Go to the layer mask of the black and white adjustment layer and press Alt or Option as you drag a copy of it over the layer mask above it. If you see this message, just click Yes to replace the layer mask. Invert the layer mask by pressing Ctrl or Command I. Make the layer active and change its Blend Mode to Hue. Hide the bottom subject and make it active. We'll create a new layer above it by clicking the New Layer icon. In this layer, we'll add our text. Alt or Option click the Eyeball icon next to the empty layer to hide all the other layers. This will make it easier to see our text. Open the Horizontal Type tool 
and make sure your foreground color is black. Open the type picker and pick a font you like for your text. I'm picking Bebas New Regular. If you'd like to use it, I provided its link in my video's description or project files. For now, I'll make its size approximately 20 points, but we'll adjust it after we type out our text. Make the aliasing smooth and center alignment. Place your cursor a bit outside a corner of your document and drag it a bit outside the opposite corner. Photoshop automatically creates text known as lorem ipsum, which basically acts as a placeholder. If you want to replace it with your own text, press the delete key to delete the lorem ipsum text. Either type in your own text, or you can copy existing text by pressing Ctrl or Command A to select it, and pressing Ctrl or Command C to copy it. To paste it in, press Ctrl or Command V multiple times until you fill your entire document with your text. For this example, I'll just use lorem ipsum. I'll press Ctrl or Command C to copy it, and click to the right of the bottom right character. I'll press Ctrl or Command V multiple times until I fill the entire document with text. Then click the check mark at the top. Click the character panel icon, or you could go to Window and Character. Open the Navigator panel. If you don't see it, go to Window and Navigator. Alt or Option click the eyeball icon next to the text layer to make all the layers visible again. To see our subject through the text, we'll clip the subject to the text. To do this, hover your cursor between the subject layer and the text layer and press Alt or Option. When the cursor changes into a clipping mask icon, click it. Another way is to go to Layer and Create Clipping Mask. To adjust the text's size, position, and leading, which is the amount of space between the lines, double-click the large T of the text layer to highlight the text. Hover your cursor over the Size icon and drag the scrubby slider. Continue to play with your text size and letting until you're happy with the look of your portrait poster. Then, click the check mark at the top. If you want to clean up the area surrounding your subject, make the layer mask of the clipped subject active, and open your brush tool. Now, just brush over the areas to mask them out. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.